Amen. I told the first service, home ownership might be the worst thing I ever did. Um, You guys laugh because you kind of get it. I I would say, maybe not the worst thing, but it's definitely, it's up there. And and that's mainly because over the last two years, I think we have had to replace a hot water heater because it cracked. We have had to replace the upstairs and downstairs air conditioning and furnace. Um, we had a tree that we, when we moved in, and part of the reason we got it was because the backyard had just covered with shade. And we were just like, this is so great. And then lightning hit it, and it died. Um, and it was huge, and it was going to fall online. So we we're like, well, I guess we got to cut that. And as they cut it, our plumbing started doing weird things. And they're like, oh, you got this line. Um, you're just probably the best thing to do right now is just to snake it every six months um, to get these roots. And these things just happen, right? And we're like, I had no idea that was an issue. And now that's going to cost me a lot of work or money. And mainly it's money because I don't do work. Um, But we're so aware, just in home ownership, that we go, this might be the issue. And then the expert shows up and says, "Eh, it's a little bit deeper than what you thought. And that's not just home ownership. That is life as a human being. We, we think, okay, well, maybe my knee's hurting. It's just, I'll just put a brace on. It'll be fine. And then you hit 3540 and your ACL breaks and pops. And you're like, okay, it was a little bit deeper. Um, you go, well, I've had this hurt in my back. And then you're like, I got to go see the chiropractor every single week. Doesn't seem to be getting better. That's weird, but that's another issue. But we find these situations where we go, it's probably just this, and if this gets fixed, I'll be okay. And that's rarely the case. Um, We all have had situations like that. We all have situations where we find that there's a deeper issue than we knew about. And the problem is, is that even though that's the case, even though we know it, we often live in denial, which is dangerous because if you don't go get something checked out, it could get much worse. And sometimes we go, well, I know it's a thing, but I'm going to act blissful ignorance, which really, when it blows up, is not very blissful. And this is the situation that I think we'll find ourselves in this morning Do we listen? Do we go ahead and go in denial and ignorance? Or do we hear what our true need really is and where the answer is found? Over the course of the last few months, we've been going through Acts. And we've been hearing some different statements and learning some different things. And I wanted to remind you of a couple because I think it's helpful for today's passage. One of those was, we're in the last days— And even though we don't know when Jesus will return, we can be certain that he will. That's a good thing. Another one, our God specializes in redeeming our weaknesses, our mistakes, and even our sins for his beautiful purposes. And last week we just heard, we experience God's grace through suffering not instead or in spite of it. We experience God's grace through suffering, not instead of it. And today, I would say that Jesus heals our disease, not what we think is the cause or what we feel is the cause of our disease, but he heals our deepest need. And that is the real true miracle. If you guys would stand with me as we read his word, it's going to come from Acts chapter 3. We're kind of jumping back a little bit, um, but just as a reminder, Jesus has ascended. His disciples are going out. Peter's preached this huge sermon, and then everybody had everything in common. This is the first miracle we see the disciples, the apostles perform. So Acts chapter 3, verse 2 says, And a man lame from birth was being carried, 
whom they lay daily at the gate of the temple that is called the beautiful gate to ask alms of those entering the temple. Seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked to receive alms. And Peter directed his gaze at him, as did John, and said, look at us. And he fixed his attention on them, expecting to receive something from them. But Peter said, I have no silver and gold, but what I do have I give to you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, glorified his servant Jesus, whom you delivered over to be denied in the presence of Pilate when he had decided to release him. But you denied the Holy and Righteous One and asked for a murder to be granted to you, and you killed the author of life whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. And his name, by faith in his name, has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given the man this perfect health in the presence of you all. And now, brothers, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. But God, but what God foretold by the mouth of the prophets, that his Christ would suffer, he thus fulfilled. Repent, therefore, and turn back that your sins may be blotted out, that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, and that he may send the Christ appointed for you, Jesus, whom heaven must receive until the time of restoring all things about which God has spoken by the mouth of his holy prophets long ago. This is the word of God, and it will never fail you. You may be seated. Uh, The friends of this man that was paralyzed, they bring him to the temple gates so that he can get alms. Now, this says that they do this daily, and so basically they're saying, all right, we figured out a solution for your disease. I mean, what else are they going to do, right? This man has been lame from birth, and his options seem to result in one thing beg so that people might give them a little of something. Now, we can't really hold this against the man for taking him each day because it makes the most sense. Um, He can't do anything else. So this is what they do. They do what seems best because they don't actually know how else to help, nor can they. And so this man, he does. He, he says, okay, this must be my diagnosis. This must be my lot in life. And so I guess I'll just beg. And so he's doing what he does every single day. It just ha- so happens that Peter and John decide to go to the temple that day. And he sees them. And whether he knows that they're apostles or not of Jesus, he does his normal things. Like, can I have some money? And they say, Um, actually, we'll give you something different. Peter's statement slams shut the idea that money or anything else really will fix this man's problem. Remind you, Peter says, I have no silver or gold, but what I do have I give to you. And he says, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Now, that's pretty impressive. Um, Peter fixed everything in that moment, right? Like this guy, lame from birth, gets to get up and walk. That's amazing. He fixed everything, right? I mean, this guy, finally, he has no problems. He doesn't have to get carried there every day. He has the ability to walk and move about. You know, people who he couldn't visit in the past, now he can go town to town and go visit relatives and friends. That's exciting. On a whim, he can go for a run or a nice walk across the cool breeze. But is everything really fixed? Does he have no more problems? I beg to say that he probably will run into something. 
that happens in the next week or month that he goes, I need that fixed too. (laughs) Now he doesn't really get to beg for alms. People are going to go, you have legs, go work. (laughs) You can do all these things by yourself now. Why are you begging us? And so now he has other problems. And we all know what that feels like, right? We're like, okay, if I just get this fixed, then, um, this will, then everything will be fine. But that doesn't even work with simple things, right? Uh, for example, changing your oil. Maybe you guys change your own oil or you take it somewhere. I definitely don't. I have preacher hands and I do not do that. But maybe you do it yourself and that's great. But both of us are going to need the oil changed again. Like, we're going to drive it, and the oil needs changed again. That's a simple one. Let's go a little bit de- deeper. And sim- it's still simple. You become a licensed professional in some, some area, and you're like, I've done all the work. I went to school for 28 years. I've done all my, I put in all my time. I've done all these things. Finally, yearly certifications are needed to maintain those things. And so you're like, I have those. I also have some student loans that I really don't want to pay off, and so I'll pay off the minimum, and then before I die, hopefully my kids don't get that. And that's just a small one. Let's go a little bit deeper. You get married and everything's perfect. <laughs> right? There's, there's no issues. You guys never argue. Everything's right all of a sudden. But we know that's not true either. Like there comes to a point where, you know, five hours in and you disagree on this thing that you're like, well, I thought we were going to go eat here on our honeymoon. You're like, no, I don't really like that. And so resentment may build up. Hurts. Things you don't talk about. And then all of a sudden, five years later, you really have to talk about it. Maybe one more level. Maybe you find a great organization that helps you deal with needing to help you get from under the bondage of looking at things you shouldn't be looking at. And it's great. It's a great organization, and they they help. It's amazing. You have a great people around you, or maybe you go see a counselor who helps you deal with the depression and the anxiety that just seems overwhelming. And that's a good thing too. But that fixes everything, right? You never have any desires again. You never have crippling anxiety again, right? It's not true either. The deeper need is still there. I mean, our ultimate problem, or what we'll say our ultimate disease, has really been misdiagnosed. And for that reason, we often act in ignorance because we're not dealing with the real issue. I mean, what do we all do whenever we get sick and we start feeling bad, especially like this kind of weather, um, you know, everybody starts getting sniffles and everybody starts feeling bad, sore throats, and so we go to WebMD or we go to Google and we're like, hey, what, chat GPT, what are my, what's my ailment? And it comes back with two things, right? It's like, hey, go take a nap, you'll be fine, or you're going to die <laughs> today, um, you don't have time to get to a hospital. And you're like, well, that, Okay. One of those two, I guess I'll go take a nap. <laughs> At least I'll go peacefully. And so you have these situations where we go, okay, what's the diagnosis? And then you do things and the doctor goes, that actually didn't help. That actually made it worse. Um, I need you to now take care of it this way. I'll use, here's a couple of examples that I think will help. I think you read it. A mom visited a hospital one time because she was super concerned about her kids. They were, she looked at the back of their mouth and they had lumps, bumps on their tongues. She's like, oh my gosh, I gotta go take care of this. And so she goes to the doctor and she's like, what is that? And he goes, uh, those are taste buds and all humans have them. 
Okay. Um, thank you. Here's another one. A lady calls into the emergency room saying, I have these extreme pains of gas and I can't, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. And they say, okay, come on in. They get in and they go, oh, um, that's not gas. You're actually pregnant and in labor. We need to deliver this baby. (laughs) And she's like, no, that's not possible. I was like, well, okay, let's talk about that for a second. Um, Actually, we got to deliver this baby. And they deliver the baby, and she's still like, no, 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 no. It's not my baby. (laughs) To which the nurse finally goes, fine. Here's your gas. It's a boy. (laughs) Another one. This lady wakes up, and she sees this mole just appear out of nowhere after her nap. She's like, I got to get an emergency mole. Like, it could be cancerous, right? Like, and, and absolutely so. Like, something pops up, you're like, oh my gosh. She goes in, and as the doctor starts the procedure, he wipes it off because it's melted chocolate on her leg. And, and we laugh at those situations. We're like, how can you be so ignorant to not understand your eating habits, that you're pregnant, or any of those things. How can you be so ignorant? But we do that with our own problems. I think we often say, well, if this relationship would work out, then everything will be taken care of. I'll be happy now. And that seems to not always be the case. Or if I get this job, I won't have any need of money anymore. It'll be perfect. I'll be set for life. We still find ourselves wanting. Maybe it's, okay, if I just get this promotion and get my peers' belief that I am finally worth something. And that seems to fail as well. Sadly, we often find that we keep saying, and this, and this, and this. If I get this, then this will work. If I get this, then everything will be perfect. And that just doesn't work out. And so what we do is we, out of ignorance of not understanding our true need for him, we are disappointed or very angry at God. Or you get what you thought your need was, and it doesn't do what you hoped it would, and you're disappointed or very angry at God. That's because we have no idea what we actually need. In the portion of the sermon we read, Peter explains to them, this is not this man being healed of his lameness that is really the true miracle. Like, that, that's, that is super great. It's amazing, but that's not really what it is. Instead, he points that it's this man being healed by the power of the one who is named Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That's a true miracle. Faith in Jesus Christ. I, what, what does it, this guy's been lame from birth, and this guy just says, you're healed. The guy just decides to get up and walk, like, just on his own? That doesn't happen. Peter describes faith in Jesus Christ of Nazareth has made this man walk and fixed everything else. It reminds me of us a couple weeks ago in youth as we're going through the Gospel of Mark of another story where Jesus heals a man lame from birth and they drop him down and they say, oh my goodness, let's, okay, let's give him to Jesus and they tear off a roof and they drop their friend down And Jesus looks at him and goes, "Uh, your sins are forgiven. What is the response? Um, Yeah, but like I wanted to walk. (laughs) I wanted, like that, that's why I got, they had to do that. And Jesus says, no, no, no. Yes, I'm going to fix that. But this is your greatest need to be forgiven of your sins.
looking to God for momentary relief, he offers that. But eternal, perfect, all-encompassing restoration of all things is what he wants to give. And I want you to notice, like, that is, that is true, but I want you to notice there is momentary relief here. Uh, this man's legs were healed, and he never walked again before in his life. We see Jesus, like we just talked about, and in instances of even his disciples healing people all throughout the Gospels. People giving them momentary relief from sicknesses and diseases, um, and Lazarus, he raises from the dead. I mean, I would be mad, but um, he raises from the dead. We see these things, and these are glimpses of what he really desires to give you. But we see, we see these things even in our own church. We see people finding financial relief when they need it. We see marriages being remarried or having remarriages that do give such good healing. We see cancers being healed. We see a text from a friend when we need it. And these are momentary glimpses into what he offers. We have, we have these physical momentary glimpses so often. I mean, we do this as a church. We, we baptize our children as a glimpse of what he offers. We take communion as a material idea of what he offers. And he gives us these moments where we go, oh my gosh, there's something deeper I need. But he's after and has set in motion really the restoration of all things, not just momentary things. And when this man was healed, it said that he went leaping and praising God. I can imagine him just deciding, like, I'm just going to run around. This is great. He goes leaping and praising God. And Peter says that in his sermon that when Jesus was received into heaven in his ascension, it was until the time of restoring all things about which God spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets. In full circle, that is the call to worship that we read this morning. I want you to hear part of it again. It says from Isaiah, Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap like a deer, and the tongue of the mute sing for joy. And we often find ourselves, I think, misdiagnosing or just acting in denial or ignorance of what we truly need, and that is for him to come and change us. For him to come and restore what the relationship that we were meant to have, and that is to have a relationship with him, for him to be our God and for us to be his people. To be with him, to walk with him, to have him be with us. This is what he offers. That's the true miracle that we see in this, in this sermon, in, the, in this story that he has offered truly life-giving, all-encompassing salvation. That's what he offers. He offers that for me. He offers that for you. And that is the hope that we go through in the midst of all the things, the persecutions that we see in Acts, in the midst of persecutions and the momentary sufferings we see in ourselves. That is what we go after. We hold on to that Because he says, yes, I'm here to fill and to take care of momentary needs, absolutely. But those are just glimpses of the greater one that I want to offer you. And that's me. He says, I give you myself. Again, Jesus heals the cause of our disease. Not what we decide or feel is our actual need. He fixes the real, deep, sin-centered, me-centered need to realize that he is what the true miracle really is. 
that's something that we can hold on to and take hope in in the midst of everything else. Let me pray for us. Father, we just thank you. (laughs) Glimpses of these things in our children singing and their joy. Father, the faith of a child, even in the midst of turmoil in a household, sometimes they are blissful and do not know that there is a greater need. But that's a glimpse of what you want to do for us. You want to give us a time where we can leap and we can jump and we can sing and we can praise forevermore. Because you have given us yourself. You said, I am your God. You are my people. I will be with you and you will be with me. Allow that hope to warm us. Allow that hope to allow us to see your smile upon us and allow us to desire the restoration of all things. And be grateful when we see it happen one individual at a time. And pray all these things.